Man. Ah. Cute. <laughs> Sam Bakeman was freed when he wrote that. It's funny. Yeah. <clears throat> Robin says, that's a good question. What do you tell people who are convinced that Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme? Let me introduce you to the social security system here in the United States. Let me introduce you to the pension program in California and various states. Those are Ponzi's. Uh, Bitcoin, at least you can do things with that. Uh, if you want to move a tremendous amount of value across the world uh, for pennies, then uh, that's the way to do it. If you want to create transactions uh, without permission of a third party, that's the way to do it. If you want to see or build upon the most secure computerized network or any network in the, in the entire world, then that will be Bitcoin. So if you want to say it's a Ponzi scheme, you can say that, but uh, those are my, my ways to look at things. So that's it. <laughs> yeah, let me choose the U.S. dollar. What do I think the most likely outcome? The, my, the most likely outcome of a wager, I personally believe, is they're going to sell to some third party. They're going to absorb those people. And uh, do you know how much it costs to acquire customers? It's expensive. There's a reason why affiliate programs for people like me or any like people like you, if you want to use it, are so lucrative because affiliate programs, you know, it's it's cheap 20 bucks 25 bucks to acquire a a person is extremely cheap in finance as opposed to you know putting a billboard up uh on times square or doing social media campaigns which the value always rises and and now you can't even do retargeting that well especially in uh in facebook because of security and privacy features through apple so for me when i take a look at it I think a lot of companies are like, wow, 1.1 million customers and we can get those at fractions and all we got to do is just pay these out and then, and then however they do it, we promise them uh, a certain amount of, a, a, of their crypto back. You'll probably take a haircut, maybe 50%, maybe 90, maybe 10%. I have no idea, but I, I think that's what's going to happen. The question is how much of a haircut are we going to take and go from there? And I know when people say, well, it's chapter 11 and, and bankruptcies never work. We did a video about that about a, three weeks ago where we've seen multiple companies come out of it. And then some people will say, well, what about financial companies? They never come out of it. That's not true. The video that we talked about within three months, a uh, financial company, I forgot the name, came out of bankruptcy. It just depends on, you know, the offers and and how lucrative it is to, to people. I got to tell you, I think it's another business would love to snap them up. Uh, for a discount, yeah. Yeah, I got to tell you, even right now I feel exhausted. Just <laughs> talking. This is sad. Uh, this will probably, I probably won't do a video tomorrow if I feel like this. Uh, hey, Rob, does Corona have a minimum delegation on a certain I don't think it is. I don't think so. But I can't remember. Uh, the team does that the D news Cardano staking pool it takes care of all that stuff. So crypto flashers, are you keeping your crypto and your I trust capital IRAs on money safe there? Sure. So there was a big issue because the website went down for like three days and people couldn't access their accounts, which I get is pretty concerning. I was concerned myself. They did a really crappy job, honestly, of, uh, of communication. You can't put stuff out on Twitter for a multi-billion dollar company and not tell people on an email. Well, on Monday or Tuesday, I forgot what it was, they came in and said, okay, there, here was the issue. We had a DNS attack and there was, uh, 
We had to secure everybody's funds. We, they don't keep the funds. It's through Coinbase custody, which is the same that Masterworks does. They contacted them and said, shut it all down. before." So we're going to do an investigation to find out exactly what happened. Nobody lost anything. Everything was good. So it worked out okay. So people are like, well, is my crypto secured there? More secure there than most other places. The most securest place you can do it is in your, um, in your uh, ledger and cold storage. That's the most securest. But... Uh, the thing is, can you do a Roth IRA, a self-directed one, and uh, not pay exorbitant fees? I don't know. It's up to you. I used uh, I trust. I've used them for two years, and it's up to you what you want to do. Not your dad. Rob, are you a flight medic in the Army? No, I was just a regular medic. Boring, run around, try to save people, that type of stuff. I'm on Twitter and had to Google their Twitter account. For the info. I am very yeah, – I'm disappointed, too. And I told them. I had a quick meeting with one of the reps and I said, you know, if you guys do that again, that's going to recipe for disaster. People are going to leave you left and right. And people are already complaining and I don't blame them. I, I was complaining too. I'm like, how can you do that? You should be on it. Dog on it. Uh, do you play golf? I don't, but one mullet does. He's really good at golf, actually. I suck at golf. Mm. I like affiliate link from reliable source. You get extra and more secure. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Ricochet, do you have a chance to go over the difference between the clothes clothes source and open source code? No. If you're looking for like like technical information, you're coming to the wrong channel. Go to Hashoshi. He is a real developer. And he can answer all those questions. I don't even really get into the, the nitty gritty of, of that. Should I mortgage my house about a Bitcoin? It's, it's proof of sauce. Rob, can, can you advise anything about Nier? I think Nier is a good protocol. The question is, how scalable are they? And we're going to find out because, you know, that sweat coin thing I'm always talking about which everybody loves to, to tell me oh well how much are they paying you to talk about sweat coin i they don't pay me squat i paid them to get those tokens i've also told you about a thousand times that it's free sweat coin is the app is free oh but they track you rob they track you well then they don't i had the ceo on it's in their terms of service and they talks about it they don't anyhow not to get off on a tangent so that's when Sweatcoin goes from this freemium service into the crypto world on September 12th of this year, oh, it's coming up. It's going to launch on Near. And the thing about Sweatcoin is that it's already been around for three years and it has over 100 million downloads. And it's the number, it's between number one and number five uh, health and fitness app globally on Android and iOS. So they've already got over 12 million crypto wallets. It's the fastest 12 million crypto wallets ever. So we'll see. We'll see if uh, Nier can, can handle that. If it does, that price is going to go through the roof. Just depends on if they can. Rob, which network platform will get hacked or lose customer money? All of them. All of them will. Just assume that and put everything in a cold storage. You'll be fine. Let's see. I don't know. Old guy tech. When it's between Tracer or Ledger, which one of the best? I never use a Tracer. Some people love it. I just don't use it. <laughs> blood, Robert, blood money golf. No dignity. Universal, maybe. Sure. Uh, so there's a link. Hold on, let me sh show you what they're talking about. I know I got a lot of links, but uh, a lot of information. So the question is, can you please show us the link you use for the four-year cycle? So this is the four-year cycle. It's a nice little spreadsheet. Very nice. I put it together, did my best. Just goes through this. Talk about when I like to dollar cost average. And, you know, all models are wrong some are useful so will the four-year cycles hang uh hang tough i don't know but if you want to find this 
to where that is. There's a link in the description. And it looks like this under strategies for your cycles. And you click that link and it takes you there. Also, another one of my favorites is uh, the Cardano Ghost Chain. Because some people think that Cardano has no tech and it's only a uh, cult. I did take a break. I took a break yesterday. It shouldn't. Uh... But thank you, Tesla. I appreciate that. Uh, I should be fine, but I'm not. I'm tired. Really tired. Maybe I'm just, just lazy. I don't know. Rob, are you keeping cash inside for the speculative cash from the What's? Sh I don't know what Schmidt is. You gotta break that down for me. Kathy Wood sold the bottom. Yeah, but <laughs> that sucks. I mean, I'm, I understand why. SEC comes in and said, you guys sold unregistered securities, so we're going to sue the pants off you. And that should usually be the death. The kiss of death was the kiss of death for Ripple for quite some time. But then BlackRock comes in and goes, you know what? We don't care. We want to use you as our custody service for our 10 trillion assets under management. And that is just a, you know, that, that's a testament. If you think that, if people say, ah, crypto's Ponzi and it's going away. Well, why did BlackRock, why did they want their customers to get into it? It doesn't make much sense to me. Thanks for trying, thanks. Uh, are staked Coinbase ETH safe? I don't know, but I don't understand why people want to, I wouldn't, I'm not going to stake that. I just thought it was a long time. I mean, with the merge coming, who knows? Thanks, old guy. Me and you got to stick together. Old guys got to stick together. <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't know that. Bitcoin considered legal tender in Lugano. Interesting. Thank you, meme Kyle Federio. Let me find you. Uh, can you ask, ask it again? I can't find it. <laughs> Kyle Federico. More mail. Not many people are talking about it. I talked about this three days ago. It was not a bridge or phishing attack. It's private keys. Yeah, apparently they emailed some private keys. Who would have thought that would have not worked out for them? Yeah, but you know, Ben and James, they can carry the show. They don't need me. They're good. Hey, Rory. Oh, there's a crypto bill passing. Is that the Lummis bill? I sure hope so. Bobby shouts. I, want, I might take some. But see, here's the thing. Like, if I don't do this, like, let me do lay around. It's like Marcus Aurelius says, is that, is that the, the, the designation for the body to lay in bed under warm blankets? Or is it to get out and do the things it was born to do and supposed to do? Just because I'm tired doesn't mean that you don't stop working. Uh, let's see. Trezor. What's the question? I can't find it. Just someone, hold on. Okay, I have 13,500 in consolidated debt. I pay, that's pretty good. I pay no interest, that part's good. The debt's not the greatest. I pay 325 per month on that debt, okay. I have a 580 credit score. Eh, it's not the greatest, but whatever. I wanna buy a house and I have 40K in crypto. Don't buy a house right now. This is not financial advice. Why are you buying a house right now? Why are you thinking about buying a house? Do you need a house right now? Like, do you have your like uh, your entire family, multi-generation that is on the streets? Okay, I get it. You probably need a place to stay. But don't. I don't think a house right now is the best option. I think just wait a little bit. I mean, if you could, me personally, like if I didn't have a house, I'd rent a house for a year or an apartment and just wait and watch the, uh, the prices go down. Unfortunately, the rates will go up. So there is that, but still you can get, 
I mean, we just saw the average price go from 450,000 to 400,000 in like less than a month. So. Okay. And the quick option one, pay off debt with new money. Here's the question. If you're not paying interest, why are you paying off the debt? It's free money. Would take two or three months. I don't know why you do that. Like me personally, if I had a loan and there's no interest, I'm not paying that. I'm letting that. I'm paying the minimum and doing other things with it. That's just me. Boost the credit score and buy a house in six months. Mm, six months, maybe longer. Option two, put all the money into crypto ugh, and rent an apartment for a year and look to take profits 2024. I don't like any of those options. And again, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't tell you what to do. If it was me, I would not be putting all my money into crypto. Remember what we talked about in the very beginning? I would, me personally, never like to put everything into one basket. I know some people will say, but that's, that's where all the money's made, Rob. You got to put it all one. I'm like, no, that's not. Like, I think Bitcoin will do quite well and crypto will do quite well in the years to come. But what about this year? Do you think we're going to have all-time highs? Do you think we're going to all-time highs next year? Well, then why would you put it all, 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 all into crypto right now? <sighs> I mean, if you did, it probably wouldn't be the worst thing of all time, you know? If you can wait two or three years. But that's if. That's a big fat if. We never know. What if, here's another, here's another, another scenario. What if, for example, China gets all riled up over Taiwan. And then China goes, you know what? We're going to invade Taiwan. And of course, you know what happens? Then America's got to step in. And you know who's going to step in with China? Probably Russia. And who's going to step in with America? Who knows? Whatever the allies, allies are, NATO. And that becomes World War III. So do you think that's going to be resolved in less than six months, two years, three years? No, it's World War III. And usually in those situations, people don't like risky assets to invest into. So you got to really play it defensively. It's not how much you make, but it's how much you keep. And there's just a lot of unknowns that I can't tell you. And you know, that's why, like, I know it's not the most provocative way, but that's why a dollar cost average. And I've always got things on the side and I can always kind of move things around and be liquid when I want to be. That's it. Uh, <laughs> Russia can't help China and Taiwan. They're too busy. They are busy. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows how much they're losing and how much? I don't know. I can't trust the media anymore. Yeah. You trust stable coins a lot, huh? Not worried about inflation. That's It's all fluid. So like over here, like you can see, like I talk about 20% in stable coins. Here's the thing. I know people complain, they're like, oh, 8.5% inflation. My money's getting inflated away. I'm going to put it all into Bitcoin. Okay. Well, you can do that. But I can tell you Bitcoin went down below 8% in less than a month, not a year. And here's another thing. I know this is a crypto channel, but sometimes you got to just take it for what it is. I want to remind everybody of something. Let me show this real quick. You can buy the dips. You can do all those things and wait a little bit. But as time goes on, you have to really think about, like, what is my time horizon? What's my risk level? Again, it's up to you. But, like, if we take a look at El Salvador, this was a, just a quick sheet I put together when everything was going through the roof. I'll blow this up so you can see it. So I just took a look at the date of purchase for El Salvador. The Bitcoin price was at 51,000 on September 6th. They purchased 400. The value at that point was 20 million, 400,000. And then I had an update it because I was doing this uh, during the highs and it was, and the, the price of Bitcoin was at 59,000. So the value today was 
at 59,000, 23.6 million. So that was a difference of, they were plus 3.2 million. They did again in September, September, October. And everything is great, right? They bought it at 43,000. It looked like geniuses when it went up to 59. 45,000, 58,000. So did Michael Saylor look like a genius. And he probably, you know, he will be proven right, I think, as time goes on. But you got to think about the short term. The short term is this. Price today is roughly 23,000. Yeah, roughly. So right now, the difference is 32 million in the hole. 32 million in the hole. So when people are talking about going all in and things like that, just be careful. Again, what's your time horizon? I think El Salvador was like, I don't, I don't think they, President Bukele, Bukele, Bukele? I don't think he was like, I want to be a Dogecoin millionaire. I think he's in it for the long haul. So that's the question for everybody. People are like, well, I'm just going to put it all in. Well, can you take that two, three, four, five, ten 10-year volatility? What are the rules? What are, what are your rules, I guess? Uh, let's see. Oh, that's a great, great uh, question. Rob, which crypto do you think will hit its all-time highs first? Solana, Cardano, or Cadena? Ooh, Cadena. Everybody seems to love Cadena. I don't really know much about it. I don't know. Out of those three, I don't think Cardano can hit $3. Because uh, even though the Basel upgrade was, was they pushed it back a couple of weeks, still doing on, still improving pretty good. Solana, there's a lot of issues. I mean, the hack that happened with Solana wasn't because of Solana. It was because of the ecosystem. And it's the same thing with Cardano. Remember when everybody gave so much grief to Cardano because Sunday Swap didn't outperform out the gate? because it was so slow and there was a concurrency issue and it was just awfully uh, like molasses slow. And everybody said, well, well Cardano sucks. Was, it wasn't Cardano, it was an ecosystem issue. It was Sunday swap. And they fixed that issue and they moved forward. Now people wanna say, well, it's Solana's issue. Well, it's not Solana's issue. It was, well, it wasn't even an ecosystem. It was just the unbelievable lack of security settings as far as they were i think as far as, far as i understand they were they were transmitting private keys over the internet in some way shape or form stupid then mental x is solana crash they slow down mental x. what a great prick picture for mental x that's a good picture um yeah they do slow down they have ddos attacks and so on and so forth the question is, is, do they slow down? And, and of course, are you okay with all their validators restarting everything? That's up to you. To be honest, I still hold Solana. I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to change the world. I'm here to make a profit. I got to agree. <laughs> TRT, dude, <laughs> most people just don't work out enough or get enough sun. Test levels, overrated. Well, I get enough sun. I'm in the sun city. And I work out six days a week. Maybe it is a, maybe it is a testosterone thing. Who knows? Let's hope so. Did a, did a blood draw. I did a couple scans, so we'll see what the results say. If I come out looking jacked, you know what the problem was. What's your thoughts on VeChain? You know, I was a, not a big, I was a big advocate of VeChain in the early days, like 2017, 2018, 2019. And then it just kind of fell off the face of the earth and they just worked really hard. Now I see that they're actually partnering up with, they partnered up with Walmart a long time ago and I just thought, it just looks like a trial run. But it looks like they've been doing a lot of work. Also with pharmaceutical companies and some other place. So VeChain is actually one of those products, projects, as far as I can tell, 
which actually has a real world use case. And it's all about tracking and those types of things. So uh, I don't know, I don't own any anymore. So, and on this channel, you know, I'm super biased, right? Like I'm super biased. Like if I don't own it, like I don't really talk about it. It's the truth. So if I start talking a lot about VeChain, you're like, oh, Rob must have bought VeChain. Makes a lot of sense. Oh, Rob talks about Bitcoin. Maybe you own some. Rob talks all about Sweatcoin. Maybe you own some. Ethereum, Cardano, Chainlink. He must own some. Yes, you're right. John, go, I'll let you know. I'm going to do the sliced alone stack, TRT and HGH and whatever chemicals I can put in my body. Oh, I got to send you a text today, meme. We got to we got to hammer out the um, the charity for Protechos before October 1st. I'll text you later. Any micro cap coins? Yes. Yes. Gensukishi, which has been taking a huge hit. There's a second channel called Dan Degen. Like this channel is just meat and potatoes uh, straight up dollar cost average, super safe. But that's like the gamble channel. Like if you want to gamble, Dan Degen's your channel. And the first one I ever did was called Gensukishi, one of the, and that was before, before it came out. And I did great, picked it up for like a penny, went up to $1.45, I was very, very happy. And then, it, then it kind of went down to 50 cents, then 40 cents, and it was there for a long time. Now it's at 23 cents. And I talked to the guys over there, I go, what is going on? You guys have been stable at 40 cents for like months. They're like, yeah. Um, we had to delay a, a rollout. So people are ticked off at us. So they, you know, they think that any, any delay is, is a bad thing. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll have to pick some more of that up. So micro cap Gensukishi, I think it's like in the 400s. It's the reason I like it so much is I have four criteria, the cut. And that's only for projects that are just getting started, not products that are already established. I always look at the community, how big is it? What's the utility, what does it do? What is the team, what is the tokenomics? And the great thing about Gensukishi, and it's the same thing with Sweatcoin, why I like those two, is because Gensukishi was Elemental Knights. It was a game that was on uh, Android, iOS, PlayStation, and uh, Nintendo Switch for years and years and years. And they went from that to play to earn. And also, uh, they built it on Polygon. So I really like that project because they already had millions of built-in gamers. So I'm like, this will work out pretty well. And it did, worked out great. And now it's a play to earn metaverse game. And they're just slow to roll out some things to get things right. I'm cool with that. I mean, take some time, so yeah. Ruski suck, said test therapy will shrink your balls. Dark path to go down. I would try anything before that first. Plus you get mad angry if you get raised for an fire base from Chile. Too early to bed. Intermittent fasting. I do all that stuff. I've been intermittent fasting for seven years. Seven. I don't eat breakfast. I always start around uh, 12, 1. So pretty good. Maybe it's something else besides that. You never know. You never know. Oh, wow. Dog put me on steroids last fall. Nasty. Didn't like what I turned me into. Kept from people. That's not good. Loris. Loris says, hey, Rob, what's the latest on real estate? Watch the video from two days ago. Uh, I had a guest on who is a real estate agent in, uh, in Phoenix. Great guest. And she talks about, uh, she talked about the macro in the nationwide and she talked about uh, uh, we talked a little bit micro is what's going on in, in Phoenix, Arizona. And it was good. And um, it looks like there's going to be a downturn. There's going to be a pullback because it was just way too hot for too long, just like crypto gets. And it's going to pull back. You're going to see that maybe 12 to 18 months, maybe 24. And then things start to grow again. Everything goes in cycles. I don't care what people say. It's different this time. It's never different. Just read this book. See this book? This time is different. Economist Ryan Hart, Ryan Hart and Rogoff, they go over eight centuries of, of economic data 
and just pretty much say that it's just everything's in cycles and just repeats and repeats and repeats. People are victims of habit. Oh, uh, what would you do if you can only afford to invest 100 to 200 bucks a month? Depends. Am I 21 dashingly handsome, Rob? Or am I in my 40s super tired, Rob? Or am I in my 60s really tired, Rob? It just depends on where you're at in life. Like, let's say if I'm 2021, I'd probably throw a lot of that in some risky stuff because I got a lot of time. Who cares, right? Asymmetrical bet would probably be crypto. If I'm 30, 40, 50, well, if I'm 40 right now or pushing up to 50, I would take a look at it and go, you know what? I probably want to diversify a little bit more because who knows how much time I got. So I probably want to, if it's just 100 bucks, something safe. I mean, I don't know about bonds. It seems kind of ridiculous ridiculous maybe like an i would look at an still a little bit of crypto maybe an reit a real estate investment trust and uh if i was at that point i'd probably want to also put into a roth ira quite honestly because i'm going to be retiring at 59 and a half so that's what i would do and then if i was like 60 70 depends on how much money i have but if i'm like swinging at that point it depends how much I have. If I have nothing, I'm, I'll have to swing for the fences because I'm like, well, I'm 70 years old. And I got nothing in savings or whatever, if that's like my case. Asymmetrical bets and go from there, which there's only one big asymmetrical bet, in my opinion. Top five Cardano projects, World Mobile Token, Cornucopias, Meld, Wing Riders is for the decks. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what the fifth one, but those are the ones I like. Oh, there was another one. Damn it. What was it? World Mobile Token was working with them for uh, real estate. I forgot the names, but that seemed like a pretty good project. So that's what I got. See, there you go. Chris says, I'm 60, still buying crypto. I have a good phone. Okay. Yeah, well, because in these days, you might live to be 100. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. It's sad. Matic will be a blue chip if Raider they took too much time. Yeah, maybe. It just depends how they scale. All right, everybody. So I'm exhausted. I'm really tired. So I'm going to cut it off of there. Um, I want to say thanks, everybody, for stopping by on a Saturday. I do appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, that's it for today. So look, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one, whenever that is. Adios.